Hellerai here. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make one of the simplest types of handle grips that you can. This requires the least amount of materials at a bare minimum. It only requires twine and scissors. But there are some extra things you can do. Now you'll need a twine that at least has two strands, uh, preferably three strands or even four strands. While I don't really have a handle that I need to wrap right now, I can demonstrate on this, although I won't be doing some of the um, final things to it because I don't want to make it permanent for this handle. I like this magnifying glass handle the way it is. So to start, you'll want to get a good length of twine off your ball and you'll want to go ahead and snip the end. You're going to come down about oh two inches and you're going to untwizzle this. Now once that is done you're going to want to take whatever piece is in the middle and pull it down like that. Put it over the still twizzled part and pull it up through this loop and you're going to want to tighten that down. It's going to be very important that you keep track of which strands you've already tied in this process and you can do that by setting them in your finger here. So now this one becomes the middle one. And you're going to want to do the same thing. You're going to want to pull that down a bit. Go over and come up through that loop. And tighten that down. Take the piece that you just tied. And hold it in your other two fingers. And then the third piece. You're going to want to do the same too. And at this point you can kind of let go of the other two pieces. Because you know which one you're working on. Now, once you have that third piece cinched down, you can pull these two pieces back, hold it with the rest of the twine, and go ahead and snip that there. And you should end up with something that looks like this. Now, after that is done, you put these ends around the top of the piece that you're working on and you go ahead and tie those together. Now once you've put the strings around each other once, you're going to want to take it and turn it like that. Keep pressure on that as you start your wind very carefully. You go over the top until you come back around to the knot. And then you go underneath. And this is where you want to start to pull tightly as you wind it. You can hold the knot down and really tug on that to tighten it up. And then you just begin winding like this. And these little ends here from your knot, you can just go over those. So as you wind, you want to keep your thumb pressed down as a kind of guide. This is sort of the way you want to hold your hand which will make sure that each go around is laid tightly on the handle and snugly against the coils on top of it. So steadying this grip a bit more. So you have it, you're loose in there and that's pulled and then your thumb is pressing down on that. And this is sort of your support and you turn it that way against the direction that you're pulling. 
as you get to the end you might want to switch the grip to make it easier to take it all the way to the end now once you approach the very end you're going to want to come in and snip your string you're going to untwizzle this like you did for the top and this can be difficult because you have to hold everything down while you're doing it now you'll take one strand any strand and you'll come back and then you'll tie these together we'll tie these two with this one again it can be difficult because it's almost a one-handed operation you want to twist it like you did before and you're going to want to tie this a, a double or even a triple knot and now you can make a few minor adjustments to sort of get these knots in line and go ahead and snip these ends off Now, if I wanted to make this permanent, the next thing I would do is I would take a bit of a uh, Pleo bond here. It's an all purpose adhesive. I find it's wonderful. It sets up rather quickly. And so I would just, I would put a glob here and a glob here. I would let that soak in a little bit. I would put a little bit more on top of it and just kind of smooth it down and another thing you can do and this can has uh tipped a couple of times as you can see is you can varnish it and if you're going to varnish it i suggest firstly wearing gloves and secondly using a sponge and squeezing in the varnish like that and giving it ample time to dry afterwards you know what i'm actually i kind of like that i'm going to go ahead and make that permanent now you can see after about 90 seconds it soaked in a lot from the initial large globs that were on there and it's become sticky so now I know it's time to go ahead and put a little bit more on there and go ahead and smooth that down a bit. And then I'm going to leave that alone for about five minutes. If it's a little loose at the bottom from correcting the alignment of the knots, you shouldn't really worry about that too much because most of it is going to be tight and the pleo bond once it dries is going to hold that in place now if you're at all worried about this or this end turning on you you can go ahead and put a bead around the top edges of the ends as well get the sponge wet and I'm gonna start squeezing in that varnish now a little trick with varnish and paint is you can hold your breath until you feel like you really need to breathe until all the oxygen pretty much is taken out of the air in your lungs And you can breathe that air into there and close the lid. Tap that lid down. And what that does is that puts a lot of moist carbon dioxide into the top of this container, which will help prevent a skim from forming on the top. So with this varnished, I'm going to go ahead and let that dry. 
before moving on to a final step I like to do. Now once that is dry, which can take a couple of hours, you can, if you have some, use wax on it. Just rub it in like that. And then use your hand to sort of push that wax into the grooves. That improves the grip a little bit. It makes it look more seamless. And it also provides a little bit of waterproofing. And so there you have it. That's how you can make a grip that is pretty cheap and pretty easy and fairly quick to do over something more complex like this. And this is something I'll be covering in a future video, probably going to give this hammer a grip on it like this one here. All right, have a good one. <laughs> Can also be a torch.